Today, I'm gonna actually tell you guys a story. So I've mentioned quite a few times that I was very sick in 2012. I was 13 then, and that was when I amputated my right hand and I was properly diagnosed with Addison's disease and started taking treatment for it. <clears throat> and today, I'm going to give you guys a better idea of what actually happened. So up until that event, I used to get sick pretty often and not just like a normal like two, three day cold like thing. I would get really sick and I would be bedridden for like two weeks, but I always got well again and we kind of just took it as a part of my underlying illness, which is APS type one. And that's kind of how it started this time too, but I was getting worse much faster and I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't drink, I wasn't able to get up, I would collapse every time I tried to stand and my parents got very worried. They asked me quite a few times, do you want to go to the hospital? And I said, nope. <laughs> um, and I think a few days before I was actually taken to the hospital, I was not aware of what was happening around me anymore. Um, and my mom noticed that I was coughing in this kind of strange way. It sounded like a very superficial cough, um, which made her pretty worried because I was doing it continuously, constantly. Um, and then the next morning, my father saw me tr collapsing, literally trying to go to the bathroom. My mom was trying to take me to the bathroom. And then he got really worried and somehow I gave them the green signal to take me to the hospital. So obviously I don't really remember what happened because um, like I said, I wasn't aware, uh, but I do have like very vague glimpses of like the ambulance driver introducing herself to me. <laughs> um, anyways, I was taken to one hospital, then I was taken to another hospital. There was a lot of waiting and chaos and stress. People didn't know what to do with me. And then finally, I was taken to the hospital that saved my life. They took an x-ray of my lungs and figured that I was not able to breathe because my lungs were completely filled with mucus. And so I was kept on a respirator, which is a machine that helps me breathe. And then I was kept on an ECMO because my the rest of my body was basically just shutting down. So my heart stopped. So this machine that's called ECMO preserves basically the most important organs in your body. So that is, your lungs, your heart, your kidneys, and your brain. And I was on this for five days. <clears throat> and after that, I seemed to have become a little bit better. I think I woke up or something. Um, and actually before this, my parents were told that once I was kept on this machine, there was only a 5% chance that I would survive. <laughs> so you can imagine that was must have been terrible for <clears throat> all of my family and all of my grandparents, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, everybody just boarded the flight and came as quickly as they could and I will always be grateful for that. Um, anyways, after a couple of days, unfortunately, my lung started bleeding, my right lung started bleeding so they ended up having to remove a part of my right lung. It doesn't have a very big change in my lung capacity, but it does make me more susceptible to lung infections. And after this, they kind of concluded that I had gone into an Addison's crisis. That's why they started the treatment for Addison's disease. Um, and I have like, many different memories actually at this time but I just remember waking up and just realizing that I couldn't talk <laughs> and there were tubes coming out from every possible hole in my body um, 
I had a feeding tube through my nose and then it was the respirator and then I had something coming out from my shoulder and then from my other shoulder and then from all other places and then I saw my right hand and I don't know how else to describe it then it looked like something from a horror movie <laughs> it was bandaged up but the fingers were showing and they were completely blackish grayish and when you touched it it was so cold and really rough um that was pretty horrible actually from here i was kind of slowly recovering but regarding my hand i was told that i would only be losing the tips of my fingers and I cried about that <laughs> um, but I ended up having to go in for operation I think up to 18 times um, until one day they told me that tomorrow you're going in for an operation and we're going to try to see if we can remove a little bit more because until then they had been just taking a little bit more a little bit more seeing what to do um, but yeah, they were just taking bits and pieces at a time because they wanted to save as much as possible of my hand. So I went in for the operation thinking that they would just open it up and take away some more of my fingers. But when I woke up, I knew that something was not the same and I pulled off the quilt and I looked down at my arm and the bandage was like way smaller than it had been before and I couldn't believe it because nobody had told me that my whole hand would be removed so I was like no it can't be but I knew inside that that was what happened and obviously I found out that they had to take away my whole hand and that was very very tough because I wasn't prepared for it first of all um, and I'm not angry or anything because I know that was the best thing to do at that time uh, but it was definitely very hard for me to handle they also ended up having to do a skin graft because the skin basically just died I recovered slowly but surely and I finally came home with a lot of scars on my body and with an amputated hand and a little bit of my right lung left and with very little energy <laughs> um, but I'm going to make a part two where I talk about the actual recovery both physically and mentally because it was pretty traumatic there is no denying that both for myself and for the people close to me my family first and foremost and I forgot to mention that I think the whole Indian community here in Oslo were there to support me people we didn't even know were there to support my parents the whole first floor of the hospital was just filled with our indian community and that was just so overwhelming for me to hear about that later and it's really i don't even know how to describe how grateful i am for that that just shows how loved we are yes it was a terrible experience but i don't want to forget that it ever happened because that is what has shaped who and what i am now and who and what i am becoming and i'm proud of that and i learned so much and i grew so much and this experience is where i draw my inspiration from now if i'm going through difficult times now i find inspiration from this experience because i survived it we survived it and i have amazing parents and 
an amazing sister and I can't even express how thankful I am for being a part of this family. <laughs> the most important thing that we learned is not just to survive, but to actually live life to the fullest and enjoy the smallest things. I remember me being able to sit up for the first time, being able to talk for the first time, um, being able to eat for the first time, being able to go to the bathroom for the first time. <laughs> um, and now I'm, I'm so grateful that I can just get up and get my own glass of water because I was at a point where I, I couldn't even say that I wanted a glass of water. <laughs> That's all for this video. Stay tuned for part two and give it a thumbs up and please comment down below and also subscribe if you want to see more of me. And I'm sending out all of my love and take care of yourself. And I will see you in my next video. <laughs>